Major travel concerns and huge snow totals on the way for millions of Americans over the next week. Welcome in, folks. Happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully we're having a wonderful day out there, and I appreciate you joining me. We've got a lot to talk about. We've got big snow ongoing right now. We've got bigger snow on the way and a potential East Coast snowstorm. Uh, some of us could see our first flakes of the season coming up by the time we get into this coming week, so a lot to break down in today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB. Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. All of it's free. doesn't cost you a penny. All it does is help keep you weather wise and in the loop as we continue to track this active pattern. And if you're a returning viewer, yeah, you probably noticed my background's a little bit different today. I'm at home uh, for the holiday, and I'll probably be here for another couple of days, so I apologize for maybe this slightly less pretty uh, wall behind me. Uh, but uh, either way, just figured I'd let you know that. Also, let me know where you're watching from and what you're seeing out there. Always helps me compare the model data to those real world observations. All right, folks, let's dive right on into it today and show you what I'm seeing. This is the latest run of our European computer model and continuing to show quite an active stretch ahead. We've got big lake effect snow ongoing right now. We've got another system on the way this weekend that's going to bring potentially more than a foot of snow for some of us. That wasn't enough for you. Storm number three on the horizon after that. That one could potentially be the first East Coast snow for at least some cities uh, by the time we get about five to seven days from now. Let's go ahead and start by just uh, showing it to you in the model data and giving you the latest here on kind of the near term look at things. And we'll use our RGM model here to kind of time things out for you. All right, let's back it up and get this into what we're seeing out there right now for many of us here on this Thanksgiving morning and afternoon, depending on when you're watching. We've got big lake effect snow bands continuing here across the Great Lakes and some of us getting in on uh, whiteout conditions, uh, hazardous travel. So obviously the timing, unfortunate as uh, it's Thanksgiving, a lot of folks out there on the roadways up there. Uh, but the, the Great Lakes uh, seem to not care today, to say the least, as they are pumping out big time snow and uh, are continuing to kind of keep that forecast up throughout the day today. Now you can keep it uh, uh, going here into this afternoon and evening. Uh, I think the folks that are getting snow now are going to continue to get it, going to likely crank up even more into upstate New York, into the Tug Hill, uh, down towards uh, Erie, Buffalo, Northeast Ohio, going to get some really good snow today. Uh, some of the snow could even get down into the mountains of West Virginia, a little bit of Northwest flow snow, you notice starting to show up on some of our model data. Wouldn't even be surprised to see maybe a couple flurries or light snow showers make it all the way down to the Smokies, would not completely rule that out. And it continues, folks, here's your Black Friday afternoon still puking snow off the Great Lakes, starting to calm down a bit towards Michigan, but just getting going, uh, or really cranking up, I should say, up into New England as the lakes continue to feed off of that very cold air running over the warm waters. And then, yeah, check it out. By the time we get into uh, this coming Saturday morning, here we go, 9Z, that's uh, about 4 a.m. East Coast time. Yeah, a lot of blue and a lot of green showing up on the map. So let's go ahead and break that down. That's going to be storm number two. What's causing it? Uh, how much snow could we get out of it? And uh, let's go ahead and show you the latest on that. All right, false start on me there a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and show you the snowfall totals from the lake effect before we get into storm number two. Uh, this is snowfall to come as of seven o'clock this morning, East Coast time. Uh, so, you know, subtract anything you get throughout the day from these totals. But Marquette's still looking at anywhere from or around half a foot really looks to be on the way for you folks. Just off down to your south and east. So that's where we could still see more than a foot of snow here into portions of the UP of Michigan. Obviously, that's going to cause big time travel concerns and all sorts of uh, headaches out there for folks trying to get around on this Thanksgiving, but nonetheless, that's the forecast. Very heavy snowfall coming in off the lakes right now uh, up into the upper peninsula of Michigan. You go down south into the mitten of Michigan, Traverse City looks like another three or so inches to come today, but just again to your east here, uh, we can still see more than a foot as a heavy band looks to set up this afternoon and even into the overnight. Still going to get bands down here into western Michigan, Kalamazoo, three to five inches or so to come. Uh, same thing for uh, Grand Grand Rapids, maybe a little bit less than that. And so a lot of folks down here are going to get some good snow. I know Bonnie watching down here into southwestern Michigan. Yeah, still looks like a good couple of inches of snow could be on the way for you as well, Bonnie. So hopefully you're enjoying it and uh, enjoying your Thanksgiving up there. Hopefully uh, you're, you're getting out and playing in the snow a little bit. All right, how about the Northeast? Well, I think uh, pretty good snowfall totals here as well coming in, especially uh, into the Tug Hill, but also 
uh, down towards Erie, northeast Ohio, and uh, near the Buffalo region. That uh, corridor, that lake effect corridor, could still see a foot to two feet of snow for some of us. So plenty uh, of uh, snow uh, to use uh, this afternoon. So if you you know don't have anything to put the uh, turkey in today and you want to you know freeze it, you just put it outside in the snow. Might not be the worst idea for folks up this way. No snow along the I-95 expected uh, on this Thanksgiving, but could be a different story by the time we get on into early next week. It'll be storm number three that we talk about later on in the video. Before we do that, though, let's break down storm number two. And this one has been trending up in the snowfall totals for who? Well, let me show you. Well, obviously, the first thing you need for snowfall is cold air, and that's uh, something that we're going to have plenty of as we go into this week. And you can see all these uh, blue and pink and purplish colors. Those are below average temperatures, and uh, we're going to have a big corridor of it from uh, Montana all the way down into the eastern United States. That's being brought in by that big trough that has worked on through over the past 24 hours, the same one uh, that is bringing plenty of lake effect snow out there for many of us. So cold air is not going to be a problem for the most part as we get our next system to begin to work in. Uh, you might be wondering, though, well, you know, know how uh, where is the system how's it going to unfold we've got the cold air obviously the next thing you need is spin you need energy you need low pressure and we're also going to have that as well and you can see it showing up here this is by tomorrow afternoon black friday uh, 18z and you can see all of this spin uh, beginning uh, here over the northern rockies idaho montana uh, washington and oregon there's the piece of energy and it starts to dig uh, or move south and begin to amplify as we say in meteorology and what happens is all that energy it works over the rocky mountains and you start to get a couple of things. We have uh, something called quasi-geostrophic theory. I know that's a big fancy terminology, but basically when you get down sloping winds, which is what we're going to see here into the mountains on top of a CVA or cyclonic vorticity advection, which is shown here by those red colors, that combination helps create low pressure. Also, uh, just kinematically, whenever you have spin and it uh, kind of goes up a mountain range, it compresses, comes back down the other side of the mountain range, it begins to stretch that also helps to create low pressure. So all of that going to really help to get a uh, classic Rocky Mountain low to develop here uh, towards Wyoming and Colorado and then kind of dive south. And you'll see here on the map, it uh, begins to follow a pathway right through the Central Plains, through the Ohio Valley, and then eventually pulls on up north uh, through the Great Lakes. And then behind that is our next piece of energy that we'll discuss here in a moment. But before we do that, let me show you what storm number two could look like on radar, as well as what kind of snowfall totals we could be talking about before all is said and done. All right, we'll use the same RGM model that uh, I showed you for the lake effect, and you can already start to see by Friday morning 12Z here around uh, 7 or 8 a.m. You've got this band of snow beginning to sneak into the map here on the left-hand side out towards the Dakotas and Nebraska uh, and uh, starts to really get going and begins to amplify a bit. And to notice by the time that we get into Friday evening, we've got snow breaking out over Iowa and portions of Nebraska over a stretch of the Dakotas here and uh, that's only the beginning folks through the overnight of Friday this storm really begins to amplify here we go waking up on Saturday morning it looks like we're gonna have some snow in St. Louis could have snow as far south as uh, maybe places like Farmington Sykeston would not be shocked to see some uh, flakes begin to fly there by Saturday morning you keep it going and it just snows basically all day up into Iowa starts snowing into Illinois uh, into Indiana Chicago now something to note here uh, definitely is the rain snow line is going to fluctuate from what you see on this model. It could shift a little bit further north. It could shift a little bit further south. Keep that in mind, though. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be a, a key part of the forecast. But either way, the folks that stay in snow the entire time, which right now looks like places like Chicago, up into Iowa, maybe even uh, portions of central Illinois, northern Indiana, we're going to get some pretty heavy totals out of this. Storm continues cranking Saturday afternoon, starts to wind down overnight Saturday for places like Iowa and Illinois. But then the snow breaks out into portions of central and northern Ohio, western PA, uh, western New York State. Something also I would watch here... This this is Sunday morning. I know it, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but watch for some icing into the mountains of North Carolina, maybe even the mountains of South Carolina up into southwestern Virginia. Not being talked about a lot here, uh, but folks out that way would not be surprised to see some ice there for your Sunday morning. Looks like mainly rain for Kentucky, Tennessee, southbound into the Gulf states, uh, but uh, looks like beautiful snow up into Michigan. You can even see a thumping of snow try to work on into New England to start the day Sunday, but throughout the day Sunday, the storm starts to hook north, and what starts is some snow into New England 
and starts his ice down into Appalachia, uh, eventually turns to a good old-fashioned cold rain here by Sunday afternoon along the I-95. And if we keep it going here with our European computer model, that cold rain really takes over, and this storm is out of here by Monday morning. But what's behind it? Yeah, another storm, storm number three. It's the gift that keeps on giving as we start December. And as I've kind of been telling you, I think what happened here for the past couple of weeks or so. All right, that's what it could look like on radar. What about snowfall totals? That's what probably many of you want to know. Well, let's go ahead and take a look before we start to break down storm number three. Right, let's get into the snowfall totals here with storm number two. We'll start up into the Dakotas. Uh, this is the NWS forecast for the next 48 hours, and I think the storm will be done by then, so the timing works out good here. I think a good band of uh, three to six inches of snow or so here through the heart of South Dakota and into uh, southwestern uh, North Dakota, it looks like, going to get a pretty good band of snow, so I think uh, the NWS onto something. You're also up into Montana. If you happen to be watching, I don't think I have many viewers there, but uh, could see a pretty good uh, early season winter storm out of this as well. Now, as we go further off to the south and east, this is where the totals are really going to be big, folks. This is the European computer model. This is just the operational run, so this is just one model. I'm going to show you uh, another uh, tool here in a second to use, but just from the operational Euro, this is going to be a good snowstorm. I'm talking half a foot to a foot of snow for a lot of folks. Almost the entire state of Iowa into the northern half of Illinois, the southern half of uh, Wisconsin, northern Indiana looks like big snow. Now, keep this in mind. Uh, this includes the lake effect snow that's ongoing right now. So a lot of this up into the UP and then, uh, excuse me, and up into uh, northern uh, Michigan is mainly lake effect. If I back it up, this is pre-storm. So you can see that's all the lake effect. And then here comes the actual storm itself that gets uh, kind of these new totals added on top of it. So all things considered, looking like uh, a pretty fruitful event here. I do think somebody in this vicinity that I'm going to circle right into here, probably southern Iowa, extreme northern um, Missouri, and into maybe northern Illinois could easily see a foot of snow out of this event, would not shock me. That's just the operational Euro. Here's the blend of models. The blend of models is further north and has even higher totals than the operational European. I think these totals are probably a little bit on the higher side. It has a big corridor of a foot plus of snow here right through Chicago. It's probably a bit much. Now, I think this is a pretty good ceiling to show you. This is not impossible to get, but this would be the higher end of what we could potentially see from a storm like this. I think something like the European, more accurate total-wise, but maybe the blend of models is on something more with the pathway of the heaviest snow. Uh, maybe it does happen up further right along uh, kind of the Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin kind of border belt and there could definitely be an area that wins pretty big with a setup like this. Also going to get some snow in the northeast out of this. Now, it's going to be mainly rain, though, especially for the uh, I-95. As you go up into the interior from this, uh, just this is just storm two. This is not including lake effect. Could still see a good corridor of one to three, even some three to fives mixed in here into the interior of the northeast. Uh, but, uh, you know, after you get done with the lake effect, this will probably feel like not a whole lot, at least for some of you. But if you don't cash in on the lake effect snow, uh, you could definitely get lucky with this storm system. And if this one doesn't do it for you, well, what about storm number three? Yeah, that one also going to take a pretty favorable path for snow for a lot of folks. Let's go ahead and break it down. Well, as we end out November and start December, still expecting plenty of cold air to be left around. And I'll be honest with you, it's a bit of a switch up from what we saw about a week or so ago in the model guidance. Remember, it looked like the southeast ridge was going to be in full swing. And I was telling you, a lot of us might have to wait a bit longer for snow. Now, some of us and a lot of us, to be fair, will still have to wait longer. However, not everybody in the southeast ridge looks to get beaten down. Either way, it's going to be chilly. And guess what? Another piece of energy moving right through the Rockies here by Sunday afternoon. Uh, this is 15Z going into 18Z on Sunday. And it's going to be the exact same process, folks, that I explained with vorticity beginning to create low pressure. But notice this time it crosses the Rockies at a much further point, uh, gets that spin and that low pressure to develop uh, even down into New Mexico and Colorado. So that's going to be a much more favorable low pressure formation zone uh, here for snow for a lot more people. And you can see the path of this vorticity by the time we get into early Tuesday and into Tuesday afternoon, the core of it, the core of the lift in the atmosphere here are going to be further south south over uh, kind of the deep south, Mississippi, Alabama, the Carolinas, right where that vorticity is spinning and then starts to work up the coast. And that's a pretty favorable look for some sort of uh, snowy event to potentially unfold here as we see in our vorticity map. Now, what could it look like on radar? Probably your next question. Well, here's the European model. Notice snow begins to break out into Colorado, Kansas, and into Missouri by the time we get on into your Monday 
By Monday evening into early Tuesday, we've got heavy rain down into the Gulf states, but a band of snow trying to develop through the Ozarks into the Ohio Valley. And eventually, this storm system really starts to overlap with the cold air and snow begins breaking out into southern Indiana. Portions of Kentucky haven't seen a lot of snow there yet this season. Uh, even uh, into southern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania tries getting snow. Turns into a full-blown snowstorm for portions of uh, the Northeast. That would include places like uh, much of Connecticut, northern New Jersey. Uh, it's a mighty fine line in places like Philadelphia, but maybe it starts as snow, goes to rain, and an event like this would be a good snowstorm for the Hudson Valley uh, up towards Scranton, back down towards Harrisburg State College. And uh, you can see the storm continuing to crank up. Looks like heavy snow, at least a point for portions of Rhode Island and even uh, maybe places like Boston could get into something exciting with a track like that on the European model. What about the GFS model? What does it show? Well, it starts the same, gets snow to break out, but it's further south. Check it out. It's got a winter storm into Little Rock. It's got winter weather into portions of western Tennessee. Still much of Kentucky has a bit of an icy event here into the Appalachian chain from, uh, we'll call it maybe Boone northbound up into the Virginias. And it's a full-blown winter storm again, folks. Starts as some snow and winter weather, changes to rain in places like Philly, Baltimore, D.C., uh, and you still get, either way, a full-blown nor'easter that rides right on up and leaves uh, a path of ice and snow with it. Now, here's the thing. This would be next Tuesday, Wednesday. It's Thursday now, so we're not that far, but also far enough, a lot of details to iron out. Let's go ahead and show you some of the things we still need to figure out and uh, the kind of just overall chance that where you're watching from gets winter weather out of this setup. Part of the mystery here to solve is going to be the track of the slow pressure. The latest model guidance keeps it uh, relatively far north, kind of rides up the Appalachian chain. But if we look at the ensembles from the European folks, uh, there's a lot of members here that keep this more offshore. Check it out by 18Z Tuesday or Tuesday afternoon. We've got a lot of members depicting low pressure right along the Gulf Coast and the Carolina Coast. That would be more favorable for maybe a colder track. Maybe you get more snow and ice uh, a little bit further south and east than some of the models depict right now. And uh, check it out. Almost all the members here blow this up into a pretty good little nor'easter right up the eastern seaboard. And I think the closer we get, the more the models are showing this being more amplified or being a stronger storm system. So wherever that rain snow line or rain ice snow line sets up, I think there's going to be a corridor of very heavy frozen precipitation. The more amped this looks, and you got a lot of members here on the European that have this down below a thousand millibars, even if the mean here says a thousand and nine. Uh, that's just because of the location differences. But I'm seeing a lot of 997s, 993s. Heck, even have a couple 980s mixed in here. So that would be a full blown nor'easter showing up here on the models. What are the chances you actually see snow out of it, though? Well, uh, this is, again, one of my favorite maps to use. This is the chance of seeing accumulating snowfall, we'll call it, over a 24-hour period, according to all those ensembles I just showed you uh, here on the European Suite. Pretty good uh, chances out in the, the front range of Colorado, as you would expect with a further south storm track. Pretty good chances into Kansas, Missouri. And then check out where chances really blossom here. Uh, the highest numbers right now, and this is a big uptick from yesterday right into the northeast, specifically the Hudson Valley, western Massachusetts, southern Vermont, New Hampshire. Heck, even places like Boston, about a 30-40% chance. Northern New Jersey looking pretty good. It's a fine line for New York City. It's going to be one of those storms that maybe 50 miles to your north. It's a full-blown winter wonderland over the city, maybe 35 in rain. So a lot of things we're going to need to figure out here. We will do so as we get into more mesoscale model range. Range. But uh, just to show you, the uh, GFS also and its ensembles have this agreement. We've got pretty good chances of snow, even higher percentages here. Check it out. Scranton, kind of a bullseye here for snowfall right through the Hudson Valley. Again, Western Mass, Southern um, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire towards uh, a lot of these big cities that are just a little bit inland. But either way, like I said, we'll come over the data here over the coming days, but pretty good chance of snow here. And I think no matter what, this has a good shot of at least starting at snow in places like Philly, New York City, uh, Boston could uh, at least see flakes fly, even if it's not a perfectly um, you know, wintry event the entire time. Also watching ice, this is the same map, but uh, with freezing rain. And you can see ice chances beginning to increase in the mountains of North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, and uh, even further on up the Appalachian chain. So a lot that we're going to need to talk about over the coming days. It's an active pattern, multiple winter storms to break down, and all of it starting now with some turkey day snow on up into the Midwest. All right, folks, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Again, have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving. Stay safe out there. Make sure to spend some time with family, and I'll see you all next time.